Hi, James. Welcome to Business Spotlight. Really good to have you online and looking forward to hearing about yourself and about your business. So how about you start off? Tell me about yourself, please. Thanks, Milton. Uh, look, really happy to be here. Um, I am uh, an American, ex-American living in Australia. Uh, so my accent uh, doesn't immediately tell you I'm an Aussie, uh, but I've recently gotten my Australian citizenship. Uh, I live here with my family for the past 15 years. Uh, and look, I'm a, I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a business uh, executive, and uh, you know, I love the outdoors. So that's just a bit about me. Uh, you know, I like to try to find some balance in my life between family and friends and working hard and, and keeping fit. Fantastic. Tell us about your business. Yeah, so about a year, year and a half ago, I joined uh, an ASX listed software company called Linus Technologies. Uh, we are uh, an innovative software technology that lets us deeply personalize video for different use cases. Uh, so video, if you've worked with video, it's really hard to work with. Big files, hard to, to manipulate, and it takes you know, big processors and, and specialist skills and software to really work with video. Uh, we've found a way to break video apart and treat it like data. So we can break it apart, search for tiny little elements within any kind of video and recompile those together into an infinite number of personalized streams. So we can take a massive video archive, break it apart, make it searchable so you can find the 10 seconds of each video that you're interested in and present mm -hmm. back to you a custom video that meets your search criteria whether that's a sports fan wanting to see their favorite players and teams or a student or a researcher uh, or a news agency who wants to go back in their archive and find things uh, you know, related to recent news stories, uh, we, we make that possible very quickly and efficiently. So how did this line of business, James? Uh, so the business started uh, maybe six or seven years ago started with a, an idea from the original founder and the original kind of inventor of the idea. Uh, the business went through a few iterations uh, where you know, it eventually went public. And uh, one of the current founders is still in the business and I work very closely with him. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, we built a SaaS platform. Uh, we proved out the technology, we patented the technology. And this was all before my time. Uh, and the, the business tested uh, different market segments, and we found lots of applications in different places. Uh, but the business wasn't really finding the financial success and commercial success that it needed. Uh, and that's kind of when I came in, my background in product strategy and business strategy, as well as sales and market execution. Uh, that's really what I took on as a challenge, is to, to take this amazing company, this amazing potential and technology, and turn it into a really profitable business that could grow and scale. Uh, and that's what we've been doing for the last 18 months. So James, who's your ideal client? Uh, look, our ideal client is anyone who's got a large archive of video content that has value in it, that, that they're having trouble unlocking or, or unleashing that value. Uh, so we've recently landed what I would consider one of our perfect clients, uh, kind of a Nirvana client, which is IMG. Uh, they're one of the biggest uh, sports and media and entertainment companies in the world. Uh, we're working with uh, a division or a product called IMG Replay, which is literally their sports archive. 50,000 hours across 30 sports. You've got the Premier League for football. You've got Wimbledon. You've got the Masters. You've got tennis, everything from, you know, major sports down to bull riding and, uh, you know, the Miss Universe. So it's even, you know, non-sports content. And they're, they're looking to make that more available to people who want to use and license that content. So it's a perfect application for us. Uh, so that's one. Broadcasters, big leagues, th those would all be great targets for us. What's the biggest challenge you're facing in business right now? Oh, the biggest challenge for me in the business for the last kind of 12 months has been finding the balance between doing what we need to do to get the business to the next level and uh, keeping the business funded and driving towards profitability. So that, that's always a challenge with a small business. That's, that's when I started kind of very early revenue and we're still in that early revenue stage. 
so we've got you know limited runway. You want to be really um, cautious with your capital investments, uh, and especially over the last twelve months, we've we've had to raise money in a very difficult capital market. Uh, so so for me, it was doing what I needed to do strategically for the business, but balancing that that short term uh, you know cash flow position. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think any business that's especially early on, that's going to be one of the keys. You, you need to very intelligently balance where your, your capital is deployed. Absolutely. So is that one of the biggest learnings you've had in business or what are some other big learnings you've had in business? Um, look, in the last 12 months, that has been the biggest learning for me because I've traditionally worked for large U.S. corporate entities that were either very profitable uh, or very well funded. Uh, so look, I've always had budgets and things to manage to, and I've always you know, had to fight for additional capital, uh, but I've mm -hmm. never literally, literally been in survival mode where I have to raise this money or I have to cut costs so that we can survive and so that we can get to the next stage of the business. Uh, that's been a very different position for me over the last 12 months and, and a challenge that's been uh, you know, sometimes it keeps me up at night, but it's it's been the exciting part because I really believe in this business and and being able to keep it going forward has been really important for me. Um, and, Jason, and then, what you, sorry, sorry go ahead. Go ahead. You go ahead and then just generally in, in business for me, it's it's all about finding the right strategy. You can be doing a ton of things and you always get busy doing the next thing. But if you're not really thinking about strategy and thinking about, should I be doing this thing? You know, I, I know I've got these tasks, but are these tasks really going to get me the outcome that I need? Am I really focused in the right place? Right. So what have you learned about yourself during this journey? Oh, uh, look, I've learned a ton about my resilience, uh, particularly over the last 12 months. Uh, it's, it's, being a CEO of a small company versus, you know, I've, I've run divisions and, and run, you know, portions of other businesses before, yeah. but when you're, when the buck stops with you and the business's survival is down to your decisions, that's, that's a lot of stress and a lot of, it, it can really weigh on you. And when I first started the role, it really did, I, it did feel like that. Um, but I've learned that I've got a good team around me. I've got a good support network. We've got very supportive shareholders. And it isn't all down to me as much as, you know, on paper it is. Uh, but I've got those support networks. And if I'm doing the right things and I'm, I'm working through things, that things will work out. Uh, so it's about finding that balance. And a big part for me is, making time to, to take care of yourself, making time to stay active, to, you know, get some exercise, to meditate, to, you know, whatever it is, finding those things to keep yourself healthy and, and protected mentally. Great advice. How do you find inspiration each day? It's pretty easy. Um, I, I'm in an <laughs> exciting business. Um, yeah. I, I've got great people that I work with. Uh, we talk to some of the best and biggest sports in the world. Uh, you know, I'm talking to executives at, you know, some of the biggest sports and broadcasters. And it's, it's really fun stuff to talk about as well. Um, I'm, I'm maybe not as big of a sports fan as I was when I was kind of in my 20s and 30s. Um, but it's just a, that's our big focus at the moment. Probably 90% of our business is in sport. And it's, it's just such a great solution. And there's such fun conversations um, that it's, it's not very hard to find the inspiration to get up because I, I believe in what we're doing and I see such huge potential for this technology and this company uh, that I'm, I'm really just excited to be part of it at this stage. Do you have any favorite quotes or sayings that, that helps keep you focused during the day? Can't say that I've got a favorite quote or saying, um, but one of the books, one of the things that I've kind of prescribed to in the past is um, uh, The Innovator's Dilemma, um, yeah. which is, 
by Clayton Christensen. And it's just always about the scrappy upstart who people kind of discount and, you know, you don't worry about it. Like take, for example, we're on Zoom right now. And I worked for Polycom, who was one of the biggest people in the industry, biggest companies in the industry. And, uh, you know, when Zoom first came out, it was like, ah, these guys will never get anywhere. Um, so I always believe that there is that room for innovation. And if you just keep plugging away at it, that a, a small upstart can absolutely out innovate the big guys and disrupt an industry and, and just change the way that we do things. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm hoping to do with with Linus. Fantastic. What would you say to someone thinking of going into business? First and foremost, you got to love it. You, you've got to have a, a passion for it. You've got to you've got to find a, a product or a business that you believe in. If uh, particularly if you're a salesperson or even if you're a product mm -hmm. person, um, marketing, if you don't believe in the product or service that your your company is is uh, putting in the market, it's going to be really hard to be passionate and to do your job. Um, so number one, you have to really understand uh, the the business that you're going into. And I get that that early in your career, there are going to be things that you know you take a job for for the learnings, and you might not be super passionate about what the company does. That's that's fine, but especially as you get into kind of leadership roles or, or particularly sales roles, if you don't really love and believe in the product that you're selling, um, it's going to be really hard to, to get up every day and do that. Uh, the other thing that I would say is, is be open to whatever possibilities come about in your career. Uh, my career, I, I kind of always had the end goal of, of becoming kind of an executive or a CEO but I had no idea how I was going to get there. Uh, I started out as a, an accountant. Uh, I was an accountant for General Motors and have a finance degree and uh, thought I was going to be a CFO someday. But then I kind of realized I, I didn't want to just sit doing spreadsheets and crunching numbers all day. I wanted to do more. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, that led me into technology. I don't have a technology background. Um, I kind of went into product management and marketing and, and I just happened to fall into technology companies. Uh, so, you know, but I found that I loved it. And then after a period of time doing, doing product and marketing, I made the conscious decision to move into sales. Uh, but I had no idea I was going to move to Australia to do it. And I had no idea I was actually going to love it. So I, I took advice from a mentor that said, look, if you, if you want to be a CEO someday or a general manager, you're going to have to lead sales teams. Profit and revenue are going to be a big part of what you have to do. You're going to have to drive sales teams. And if you've never done their job, you're just not going to have the credibility to, to really lead those teams. So he said, even if you do it for a year and you hate it, go do it so that you understand what it is. So I anticipated I would do it for a couple of years, but here I am 20 years later, <laughs> still, still selling. Um, that's a big part of, of my job, even as a CEO and part of it that I love. And uh, so again, I didn't expect to get into sales. I didn't expect to get into technology. It's just where my career led me. Uh, yeah. So you kind of want to have a vision of what you want, but be open to how you get there. So what's the best advice you would give to your 18-year-old self? Um, well, not business advice, but I would say buy tons of Bitcoin early. <laughs> <laughs> so that, that's, you know, the, if, I, if I was a time traveler and could do that, I, you know, that'd be a bit of advice I'd give myself. Uh, but from a, just from a business perspective would be, um, don't, don't take everything so seriously. Make sure that you make time for your family, for your health, for other things, um, the tough times are not as tough as they seem. The good times are, you know, enjoy them while they're there because they don't last. Uh, so, you know, those are the kind of things that I would say is just, just enjoy the moment and, and have, you know, more to your life than, than just the stress of work. So what, do you, what do you see is that in the future, the main challenges for your business? The next challenges for Linus are actually really positive ones and, and ones that I'm excited to get into, which is how I now operationalize and scale the business. 
So the, the challenges that we've had for the past 12 to 18 months were, how do we take a great technology and turn that into a, a product that the market needs and get those early wins and those early proof points? Uh, and we've done that. We've, we've now narrowed down to the right market segment that can drive us to profitability in the near term. Uh, we have two products that we now are, are getting solid traction with in the market that we can repeat. And we've gotten those, those kind of lighthouse deals. Uh, so in the last two quarters, we've kind of closed transformational deals uh, with Cricket Australia, who's got a great brand and, and a, billion, a billion fans of cricket yeah. uh, around the world for, for Cricket Australia. Um, and then we've got IMG, who's got this great archive and, and a huge business opportunity there because there's, there's like a dozen or more businesses within IMG and the, and the bigger Endeavor group that we can get into. Uh, and then recently, we've done another one with a, a smaller company similar to IMG called Inverly Media. Um, so between those deals, um, we've really gotten ourselves those proof points. We've turned the corner on some of our financial performance. We've had two quarters of our best billings ever. We've had record you know, cash receipts. So we're, we're getting the financials to the point where we need. And we've stabilized kind of our market cap and our ability to raise capital. So the business is now stable. But now I've got a real challenge of I've got to make these new customers incredibly happy. I've got IMG. Everyone's going to be watching uh, you know, what, what this turns out to be. So we've got a, a heavy deployment project in the next kind of three or three months or so. Making IMG incredibly successful is, is one of my number one priorities, as well as the other customers, um, so that they're absolutely loving it and telling everybody in the world about it. And then scaling the business. So going from a, look, we're, we're a, a, a 12 person and a couple of contractors business to, you know, now we're supporting these major customers and we're going to have to bring on another 10 customers in the next year. Mm -hmm. So scaling the business is now my new challenge. How do I, you know, do that in a measured way so that I can maintain my profitability and, and get my, well, profitability on individual deals and get my business to a break-even point. That's our goal. Right. Um, you know, so how do I scale through that period effectively, uh, which is not a problem that we had 12 months ago. So right. we're, we're kind of in a totally different ball game now, which is, but it's exciting to be, you know, thinking about these challenges. So is that building a team or is it going to be more technology-based? Um, it's going to be a combination, look, to, to, to scale and, and move into bringing in 10 more deals and to support customers like that. I'm going to have to have some, some customer-facing um, resources and skills, uh, but very much scaling our delivery and deployment mechanism. Uh, so right now we've got these products that are scalable, uh, but it's still requiring our engineering team uh, to deploy each of these. The next challenge is how do I make these deployable directly by the customer or by partners, system integrators, channel partners? Those are the kind of things that we need to think about in, in terms of how we scale because we're not going to be able to do everything ourselves. How do I find the right partners and the right ecosystem around me to, to scale the business? Right. Thanks, Jane. That's been fantastic. Really appreciate your time. And Thanks, Bill. I really appreciate it. And it's exciting what you're doing too. Thank you. Thank you. Wish you every success with it. All right, Milton. Take care.